Hello everyone, myself Ayushi Duhun. So this is the second lesson of the course photosynthesis. In the previous video, I've already talked about light reaction and dark reaction and the various differences between the both of how assimilatory powers in form of ATP and NADPH2 are formed in light reaction which is utilized in dark reaction to form glucose and sugars. Now, these light reaction and dark reaction are further divided into various processes. Now, depending on these processes, my future videos will be depending on the various processes which are involved in light reaction. So, in this video, I'll be talking about light and its absorption and excitation of chlorophyll by light. In the future video, I'll be talking about evolution of oxygen, red drop, immersion effect and pigment systems. Then a completely separate videos will be devoted to non-cyclic photophosphorylation and cyclic photophosphorylation. Then leaving this topic, I'll straight away move to Kelvin cycle, then C4 cycle, CAM cycle and C2 cycle. And then a completely different video at the end will be devoted to difference between cyclic and non-cyclic photophosphorylation and difference between C3 and C4 plants. So moving towards the first process which is involved in light reaction which is light and its absorption and excitation of chlorophyll by light. Now photosynthesis while we talk about photosynthesis it seems to be a very simple process that the plant is utilizing ca uh, carbon dioxide and water in presence of light and it is, uh, it is forming food. But when we look inside the processes which are involved in photosynthesis, photosynthesis is quite a complex process of how light is being absorbed by the plant, how is it light utilized by the various pigments which is present in the plants, how are the pigments giving colors to the plant, how is food formed in photosynthesis is all we will be talking briefly about in the future videos including this video. So in this video I will be talking about how light comes from the source of light which is sun and how it is being absorbed by the plants and then further how is uh, the light utilized to excite chlorophyll pigment which is present in the plant which further helps in the preparation of food or photosynthesis. So what happens is that when white light comes from the sun the white light the white light constitutes of various wavelength of light which is from 390 nanometer to 760 nanometer. Now this spectrum of light involving light from 390 nanometer to 760 nanometer constitutes the visible spectrum. Now amongst this visible spectrum the wavelength of light which is utilized for photosynthesis is about 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer and this region from 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer is known as photosynthetically active radiation part of the visible spectrum. So what happens is that uh, how are these wavelengths of light utilized by the plant. What happens is that let me take an uh, example here uh, for example chlorophyll A. What chlorophyll pigment does is that it mainly absorbs the blue region which is 4, uh, 70 nanometer and the red region which is of 6, 60 nanometer and it reflects back green wavelength of 500 nanometer. So this is the region, uh, reason that the color of the leaves and the color of plants is usually green since it is absorbing the red and blue part blue wavelength of the visible spectrum and it is reflecting back the green region of the visible spectrum. So depending upon the absorption or the percentage of absorption by the various pigments. Now the pigments involves chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, xanthophylls and carotenoids. Now each of these pigments uh, now try to understand this concept that each of the pigment whether it is chlorophyll A, chlorophyll B, carotenoids or xanthophylls they have different absorption 
powers in them that is they observe lights of different wavelengths and depending on this phenomenon of the absorption of different wavelengths of light by the various pigments absorption spectrum is being formed now as you can see in this curve this is a absorption spectrum which shows the relative absorption of various pigments which is chlorophyll b chlorophyll a carotenoids at various wavelengths of light now i'll be taking example of chlorophyll a here now what happens is that in chlorophyll a you can see two peaks are being formed that is it observes light at around 440 nanometer here and again it observes light at around 6 uh, 670 nanometer so chlorophyll a pigments usually observes light at 440 nanometer and 670 nanometer so depending on what wavelength the pigment observes a curve is being plotted which is known as absorption spectrum now i hope you're clear with this concept that each pigment of la uh, each pigment which is present in the plant observes light of different wavelengths and depending on which wavelength of light they are absorbing a uh, absorption spectrum or a curve is plotted now moving forward how is chlorophyll excited by the light now we have already understood that light is being absorbed by the plants under the visible spectrum region that is light is being absorbed by the plants and the pigments are absorbing li uh, light at various wavelengths now once the light is now once the light is being absorbed by the chlorophyll pigments or the various pigments which is absorbed by the plants we need to understand this concept that how is chlorophyll excited by the light absorbed now this is a concept that you will need to understand is that for example let me talk about chlorophyll here the molecular formula of chlorophyll is c55 h72 o5 n4 mg now it contains various elements in form of carbon hydrogen oxygen nitrogen and magnesium now if it's containing element which means that it has a nucleus positive nucleus around which electrons revolve around in their ground state now once photons of light now the uh, small units of light are known as photons of light and which is known as quantum of light now once the quantum of light is being absorbed by the plants or the pigments which are present in the plants the electrons which revolve around in ground state are excited to a excited level and once they move to the excited state the electrons they remain in the excited state for a very short interval of time that is about 10 days to the power minus 5 to 10 days to the power minus 7 seconds only so once it reaches the excited state the electrons will have to come back to the ground state and once they come back to the ground state they release energy now the plants have a special mechanism within themselves that once the energy is being released after the electrons come back to the ground state that energy is being utilized that chemical energy is being utilized by the plants to form ATP now you have to understand this concept that if the electron comes back from the excited state directly to the ground state then the plant won't to be able to utilize that chemical energy in form of ATP therefore it is very necessary for the electron to come back to the ground state via the different levels which are present in the forms of various orbits around the nucleus of any atom or any element now to ensure that the electron at the excited state comes via the different levels present in the orbit of the atom a special mechanism is being present in plants now here comes the special mechanism now every pigment or every pigment that is being present in the plant 
which absorbs light now i've already talked about of how chlorophyll pigments absorb light at different wavelengths now for example let us consider that this is the complete pigment of chlorophyll now this chlorophyll contains small units of photosynthesis the, the, uh, which is photosynthetic units now amongst these photosynthetic units each photosynthetic unit has its own reaction center inside it now since each photosynthesis uh, photosynthetic unit consists of its own reaction center this reaction center which is present in the middle of the photosynthetic pigment ensures that the energy or the light which is being absorbed by the photosynthetic units are being utilized completely and once they absorb light then the electrons which move to the excited state further moves via different levels of the orbit and then reaches the ground state and the energy which is being released in form of chemical energy is converted into atp and further utilized by the plants in their dark reaction so i hope this is clear with you that how light is being absorbed by the pigment molecules and how the reaction center uh, in form of p680 or p700 nanometer ensures that the electrons the uh, electrons which are present at the excited state comes back via different levels back to the ground state and the chemical energy uh, that is converted from the light energy is utilized in form of atp so this is the first process that is being that happens in photosynthesis which is absorption of light and then excitation of chlorophyll because of light molecules so this is the complete video on the first process in the second video i'll be talking about how uh, uh, what are the various pigment systems and how evolution of oxygen happens and also i'll be talking about red drop emersion effect in the future video so please do watch the next video and also if you like the video please like the video and share it with your friends and also do follow me on an academy app thank you so much